I'm Zelda Kelly. Welcome to Secrets Laws of Attraction. Hello everyone, my name is Zelda Kelly and thank you for coming to Secrets Laws of Attraction. I want to thank Psychic Secrets for giving us this platform today so we can share, talk about, and especially learn. That's what it's all about. We have to learn. We have to keep each other encouraged. We have to make sure that we know each other is doing well. That's our job. You see, we are here to be in service of others and of teaching, encouraging, and helping others is what we're supposed to do, then it's time that we really start paying attention to a lot of people. There are a lot of people out there that are hurting, and especially in the time that we live in right now, it is May in 2022, a lot of things are going on in the world. But you can keep a good head on your shoulders. You can function. You can still continue to move forward. The first thing I want to say is the topic of today's discussion is getting started. That is the hardest thing to do. I want to share this little story with you. And I just spoke to a young lady yesterday who was so distraught, so disillusioned, hurting, not knowing the direction to go into. It was painful to hear her because it was just horrible to hear that she was feeling so down and disillusioned that she was questioning why she was here and hoping that she would leave because she didn't feel she had anything to look forward to. A lot of people are going through that right now. A lot of our loved ones, you may be going through that right now. And if so, I want to encourage you to continue to persevere. Hang in there. You have people that, you, that love you. After hearing this young lady yesterday, listening to her, and we talked about how she can change things, I wanted to share this with you. You see, the only way that anyone can ever change anything is to start changing within themselves. Start changing how you perceive things. This young lady says she didn't have any friends. She was basically stuck in an area, in a state that she wasn't from because of a family member. I understand that. There was a lot of fear in her voice. But by the time we were done with the conversation, she knew that she had a lot of work to do. And I want to encourage you to know that it just really starts. You can start right now. This moment, this section, this section of this episode, this minute of time. You can start right now. And how do you do that? Well, all of a sudden you just turn around and you say, you know what? Everything is going to work out for me. And you don't follow it up with, I don't know why I'm saying that because it never does. We are programmed to fail right from the beginning. And I've said that, and I think you know the same thing. Failure is more of an option than success. Have you ever been around people who are actually happy to see someone fail? Happy to feel that someone is not going to make it through, that their relationship has failed, that their business fails, that they have failed with a particular situation, or they've taken a wrong turn and it makes someone else happy because they feel resentment. And that's not, that's not a good place to be. You don't want to be in that place. I know you. That's why you're here. You're not in that place. But you also don't want to be that person who you feel those people 
are picking on as well. If that is your situation right now, the good thing is this. There is such a thing as not paying attention. I know, I know it's hard. But I also want you to really break down what is going on. And for that person who is hoping that you fail, I think if you really look at their life pretty hard, through a microscope even, you'll see that they are pretty miserable themselves. They certainly are not an authority on being successful. Why? Because successful people don't have time to wish ill, to wish failure on someone else. I want you to look as failure as not such a negative thing. Failure only means that you have the opportunity to try again. That's something to think about, isn't it? So back to this young lady. The one thing that stuck with me that she said, and that was, you know, Zelda, we've talked several times, and I want you to know, I try this, and it doesn't work. I've tried looking at myself in the mirror, and I've tried looking at myself and saying, you know, everything is going to work out. And the moment that I turn around, I think, what kind of a fool am I? That's just, that's just hogwash. That's crazy. Things aren't going to work out for me. And when she said that, it took me by surprise because this woman, really in all areas of her life, is very successful. She's very healthy. She goes to the gym She's extremely intelligent, got a great sense of humor, and she feels like something from her past continuously holds her back and is causing her to trip and fall. She doesn't realize that having an obstacle, there are ways to jump over it, crawl under it, or go around it. It takes determination. My analogy was with her because she is an avid person who works out a lot. I'm glad that she does because otherwise it would be ten times worse for her. And she said, you know, the the only place that I go, the only thing that I do is I go and work out. And when I work out, I don't talk to anybody. I don't have any friends. And then it was, well, I don't like it here. The people are so different. I don't even want to talk to anybody. So she's living this oxymoron life. And that's not a cut down. That is an oxymoron, really, is if you say something like, you're generally specific, that is an oxymoron, okay? So I don't want anybody to think that I'm cutting her down. But on one hand, it's, I want friends. I want somebody to be with. I want to hang around with. And then on the other side, it's, I don't like these people. I don't want to be with them. All of this can change with a change of attitude. So my analogy and my suggestion, if you're going through that today, yourself, I want you to think about this. Let's, let's not think about the laws of attraction for a minute. Let's think about this. If you were to change an eating plan, and if you started one day, are you going to look in the mirror the next day and think, wow, I didn't, I didn't get rid of those, I didn't shed those 25 or 30 or even 40 pounds that I wanted to shed? I started yesterday. I should see results now. Never mind. 
I'm not going to continue. No, I don't think you would do that. I think you would persevere. Let's go one step further. What about going to the gym and working out? The hardest part about going to the gym is walking out your door. Once you get to the gym, you're home free. You're excited about going in. You're excited about working out. And the moment that you're in there and you're working out, you feel great. You feel great about yourself and you leave and you may be tired or sore and exhausted and you may even be a little sweaty and you need to go home and you need to shower. But when you do, you feel great and you look forward to going back the next day. It's hard to get out the door. So you're not going to stand at the door and say, you know, I've tried going to the gym and it doesn't work. I don't want to do this anymore. Look, I'm not in shape. I've tried it. What you have to remember is, is trying is not good enough. Trying is basically a trial period. So when you're trying, that means that you're just initiating something. You're not following through. So the next time you're feeling like you're doing all this in vain, I want to encourage you and tell you that no, you're not. Because it takes continual working, writing it down, affirmations, talking to yourself. And there may be that only time that you are your only cheerleader. And thank God. Because in most cases, it's usually friends and family and those people that are closest to you that don't understand what you're doing. I will guarantee that there will be the day that when you make it through, and you have that breakthrough, and you get your heart's desire, and you are now in a different mindset, your family, friends, and others, your co-workers are going to gravitate around you. And they're going to wonder what you're doing. And they're going to want what you have. And that's what it's all about, because then it'll be your turn to turn to them and help them. And forget about their, their focus on you failing. Thank them. Be thankful. Be grateful. Allow that poor part of that relationship or that circumstance and situation be your driving force to overcome. You are an overcomer. You can overcome this. So the hardest part is to get started. I want you to think about this. How do you get started? You stop right now with your vocabulary. You catch yourself. You, you take out all these negative words. I'm a failure. I can't do this. I was never taught that way. I wasn't raised that way. I've struggled ever since I was a young person. I can't do this. I'm not going to do that. Well, this is certainly not easy. Well, what is? Tell me exactly what part of life is easy. We may as well have a very positive attitude going forward. When you do, you're going to see your health improve, your sleep improve, your situations improve, your work, your housework, your relationship, your self-worth, your self-esteem You're going to see improvements in all areas just by saying, I know this may be hard right now, but everything always works out for me. I'm looking forward to that. I know everything is temporary and this situation is temporary. So that's a good thing because everything always works out for me. And if you just start with that little phrase and you keep saying it over and over and you write it on a post-it note and you put it in your bathroom window and you put it on your refrigerator and you put it on your cabinet and on your desk and your computer 
and even on your phone, put it on your screen. Everything always works out for me. And then stop there. And don't add the tagline, because it never has before. Or I sure hope it does this time. You have the best thing in your life. You have the best tool in your life that you could ever imagine having. Going through this right now, what you're going through. What is it? It's you. You were born with perfect DNA, perfect spiritual DNA, and you have a direct connection with Source. How many times have you heard that you and God make the majority? Well, that's absolutely the truth. Watch your words. Your words have power. Your actions have power. And every time you feel yourself dragging down and and sliding over to that negative side, you catch yourself immediately and you say, no, I'm not going to go there today. It is going to be one day at a time. But like anything, my darling friends, this is a lifestyle. And it requires change in what you're doing. Because I want you to understand something. What you're doing isn't working. And by you saying that it's not working is putting out to the universe that you expect it not to work. And if you continue on that path where you are right now today, then in another week, two weeks, two months, God forbid, two years, you may be in the same spot that you are right now, believing that nothing works out for you, that you are a failure, you don't know the direction you're going. Well, sit down and write down exactly what it is that you want to do. It doesn't matter if anybody thinks that it's ridiculous or stupid or whatever the case may be. We all have something in our hearts that we have wanted to do for a long time. And we put everything ahead of us. The last thing I want you to know is that everything around you was the dream of someone before you. Everything around you was the dream of someone before you. The contractor that built the house that you're in, or the apartment, or the condo, or wherever you are. That furniture designer the computer manufacturer, the telephone manufacturer. Think of this. 20 years ago, we certainly didn't have the technology that we have today. That, my friends, was someone's dream. Maybe what it is that you need to do is really look up those people who really made a success of themselves. Like the two gentlemen that founded FedEx. Look at a lot of the stars that were homeless, living out of their cars, knowing that someday, no matter what, they were going to be famous, and many of them made it. Why? It's because they tuned out the world, they tuned out everyone around them that was negative, and they gravitated toward all of the positive things. One thing you will notice is when you are positive, all of those people who have been negative around you and want to have their feelings rub off onto you will really kind of fall away. Because if an attitude or a a positive affirmation doesn't serve you, then you need to decide exactly where they fit in your life. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying get rid of family and friends. But what I'm saying is, if that is a very negative part of your life, then what you need to do is you need to say, you know what, that's okay. We're not going to talk about that right now. How are you feeling? Or look at how beautiful the sky is right now. Or look at how wonderful 
this new paint is that you put on your walls. You change the subject. You're in control of your destiny. It's about time you started acting like it, don't you think? You're going to see a change. And the only thing that you can do is to get started. That is not the only thing. That is the best thing. Get started today, my friends. Change that dynamic in your life. You'll be so happy and glad that you did. I want to thank you for listening today. I'm so happy to bring this to you. I want you to know that you are a miracle. You were purposefully and wonderfully made. You hang in there. I know it's going to work out for you because everything always works out for you. I don't know when, but I will tell you that I know that it will. You be well and you be safe, and you have a very, very brave heart. And I'll see you again the next time on Secrets, Laws of Attraction. Happy manifesting!